Welcome to MCBI's 60 Mark, a podcast for curious thinkers. Well, welcome everybody. It's um, it's a big day for us here at MCBI. Uh, it's Marina Pullen from MCBI and I get to change hats yet again in the firm and become an impromptu interviewer just for uh, a couple of sessions. Um, over the years, uh, 60 Mock has had a lot of requests to interview or extract some of the information from our amazing presenters and do short podcasts on uh, for those who can't turn up in Adelaide or perhaps aren't interested in the 8am start because it can be a bit hard. So I am very lucky to kick off our podcast network with uh, Jeff Stevens from Saab Systems who just finished an amazing session at 60 Mock upstairs talking about teams and the, the benefits of when teams and people collide. So welcome Jeff. Thank you. Yes, um, I've been a, a late attender of some of these 60 mocks that 8am start. It can be a bit difficult at times, but yes, thank you. It, yeah, was, no, it was joy to actually uh, get involved. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, you're very welcome. And the uh, 60 mock community responded really warmly with lots of things that you were yeah. highlighting to them. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was a good response. I, I was very pleased. Yeah. Good. Nervous at the start, but pleased. Uh, with the made me feel very welcome. So that was great. Good, yeah. good. What do they say? You should do something that you're afraid of. Is it every day or every week? I don't know. Uh, there, there's a saying, isn't there? When you feel most uncomfortable, it's when you're learning the most. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in that case, I'll just ramp up these questions, shall I? <laughs> All right, we're going to do um, a quick four questions and just have a, get a little bit about you, sure. uh, a bit of background, and see if we can pull out some of the themes from yep. that great session that you just ran. So, Jeff, just a little bit about your professional background. Um, how did you end up here, down the basement in Adelaide? Yeah, good one. Uh, yeah, so I did computer science. Uh, it basically comes from my love when I pulled out a Commodore 64 and started learning basic programming. And uh, it was better than my bigger brother, so that seemed... I was From a very early age, I fell in love with computers um, and programming in particular. It doesn't sound so appealing to the girls. as what do you do for a job? computer programmer. Software engineering sounds better. So I, I, you know, so my background is software engineering. Did it for, done it for many years. Uh, it's taken me all parts of the world, which is great. Um, but uh, over the years, I've transferred those skills, I learnt new skills in um, systems engineering, project management, um, people. Um, yeah, so that's landed me the job where I am today, which is uh, head of discipline for uh, software engineering at Saab, which I'm still trying to work out what that means. <laughs> yeah, my son said to me, "Dad, does that mean you get to spank all the naughty software engineers as head of discipline?" Yeah, I only but, wish then. But uh, there's an image <laughs> spanking all the software engineers out there. I think I'll leave that one with you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you do sound like you're a definite and type of person who may have started off as a computer scientist, but then you've added to it. So you're a yeah. project manager and a scientist. So yeah, uh, and that's. A natural progression, I think. You know, um, you can only sort of cut code for so long, um, oh, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, you've got a similar background, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I squealed with joy, my inner nerd, when I saw Ada up yeah. at um, at, yeah, up in the combat systems. <laughs> I didn't think anyone coded in that. So, uh, it's still do it. Safe, yeah. reliable language. Yeah, it, that it is. Yeah. That it is. But yeah, you're right. Pretty boring. Uh, apologies to all the uh, the software coders out there. But... <laughs> They're squealing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you're up at Saab. You've got this incredible role to influence people and shape people's lives. Where do you see yourself in the next little while? Look, you know, it's we've got some exciting opportunities coming up at Saab, particularly with announcements that you know we're going to be the um, combat management system supplier of all Royal Australian Navy ships. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to how I can be a part of that. Um, it, what that may Bring. I don't exactly know yet, um, but I know that yeah, we're doing more collaboration with Sweden, so that's a, that's a really interesting thing that's going on, um, both challenging and exciting. So are um, you saying the ships are going to be like flat packed and we're going to have to like, assemble them? <laughs> All combat managers will come with an Allen key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel very comforted, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, so look, it, it really is just about um, learning more stuff. Uh, seeing how I can apply that learning to help others and help help the organisation achieve what it needs to achieve and c- contribute to the community, really. That's 
that's, something we all yeah something you can be proud of to you can say to your kids look this is what I do yeah 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 that's fantastic it's it's certainly something um, in the time of I've known you that's been yeah. important you know that yeah. values shines through. So um, there must have been moments in your career where you were changed, for better or for worse. Are there any ones that really stand out that have uh, led you to where you are right now? Yeah, there's a few. I mean, obviously, every different place you work as, you know, touches upon you. And I was lucky enough to do a fair bit of consulting and, you know, you learn different things there. Probably the biggest one, though, was lucky enough through Saab um, and through um, skilling Australia's defence industry, I did a master's in military systems integration, um, which is it's hard to explain, but it was you know a combination. Sounds impressive. Yeah, it does, <laughs> um, and that's where a lot of this, what I did today, come from that actual um, course, um, and so that was a real good eye opener with regards to how the defence industry works, project management, program management, safety engineering, systems engineering, all those sorts of skills, and I went in there as just a year code cutter and I come out I thought as a much better developed person my eyes were opened a lot more put it that way um, my understanding of systems and how that you could apply to different areas was was much greater I, I found finally realized that I, there was a lot I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> isn't that an awful moment when you it realize is. like yeah how yep. ignorant you actually are yep I was probably one of those really clever grads and I uh, thought they knew the world and yeah, it made me realise I, I had a lot more underappreciation of what I didn't know. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that must be interesting yeah. um, where you're coaching people and you're bringing, through, you're bringing others through that journey. How, how do you deal with that and giving feedback to people who perhaps haven't yet had that awful moment of, oh, I'm really ignorant? Yeah, look, uh, I'm heavily involved with our graduate program and I, and I really enjoy that um, and seeing some really clever grads come through and also do our uh, competency assessment for uh, our software engineers as well. So that's always an interesting moment, particularly when you get some that, you know, kind of rate themselves more highly than probably what they uh, than they are. So that's always a, a fun <laughs> conversation to have. But I can kind of relate to where they're from. Um, and, yeah, so it's about yeah managing their expectations somewhat as, as well and you say, hang on, you look you're really clever and you've got lots of potential, but there's lots of you know, your career's a marathon, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs um, and you can't buy experience. Um, but, you know, there's really clever guys, um, guys and girls, I should say, that come through this program and they're amazing. But uh, that's why I like working with graduates in the graduate program in particular. Yeah, so I do see that, yes, yeah. all the time. <laughs> that's a great phrase, um, your career's a marathon. Yeah. You know, there are moments, yeah, up and down, up and down. Yeah, so, well, there's times, stamina. Yeah, yeah. there's times where it's like, well, you get kids and, you know, your career takes a bit of a back step, doesn't it? So yep. it's important. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's, a, it's a more longitudinal look Yeah, at, you know, what you're doing. So let's talk about the uh, presentation you just mm. did. So it was all about teams and when teams collide and... The, uh, the amazing impact that teams yeah. can have. Yep. Perhaps you could just briefly talk about some of the, the themes that came out of today's session. Yeah. So, look, it, it came from a lot of research that I did while I was actually my, doing my military systems integration course. And there's a, a lecture there. We had Errol Lawson. He was a fantastic bloke, old bloke. Um, um, and, yeah, so I did some study into uh, teams. Um, in particular, I looked at, you know, what makes for effective teams. Um, so I guess the key points that I was trying to demonstrate today was, look, you need to think about, you know, be aware of teams take a while to develop. They go through different development stages. Look, I've referred to Tuckman's model in it. I don't know if it's right or not, but it's just it's good just to think about, yep, there is a tax of, associated with forming teams together. So you can do things like, yep, um, team building exercise early and that stuff like that and help, you know, minimise the tax. But just be aware, there is a tax involved. Team composition is something you should think about when you're putting teams together. And I referred to Belbin and his model and so forth and diversity within that team. Um, so that's something you should think about. Um, uh, just if I yeah. need to interrupt, the, one of the insights you put up there I found really interesting was the output when you have a, a heterogeneous team or one yeah. that's really diverse yep. versus one that's homogenous. You know. Yeah. So perhaps you could you know, reflect back on that. Was yeah, really so there's some studies there um, that I referred to with regards to um, heterogeneous teams, so those teams that have got members where they're different 
you know, backgrounds, age, gender, so forth. Generally, they for highly complex environments, which is what we're in Saab, um, they will prefer, they will give you more innovative, um, novel solutions to complex problems than a homogeneous team. Now, for simple tasks that I, I refer to, maybe the homogeneous team's better because it's a simple task and because there is also a cost with the heterogeneous team that they observe that there's more likely to be conflict happening within those teams. Um, and Belbin also um, referred to that as well. Um, so you're talking about these smart people in the corner who seem to be <laughs> arguing all the time on complex problems. Those guys? That's well, all healthy and, and normal? The, and there's conflict that's good conflict. Yep. And, the, um, and that's particularly, we like to, I try to stress to our engineers, conflict around the engineering matter is good. Conflict around personal, if you personalise that conflict, not so good. You know. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's this, you need heterogeneous teams to solve, help solve really complex problems that there could be a greater cost um, with associated getting that team up. So from there, um, essentially, is that, yes, that, you, know, you need these really smart, clever people to be able to, as I mentioned, missiles hitting other missiles, complex problem. Um, and that comes at a cost. So it seems obvious that, well, if you paid all this tax to get this team together, once the project ends, why don't you just kick that team together and place them in the next project? Because you know, that tax you don't have to repay. And I was hoping to achieve from my, from my talk was that I referred back into, I had a bit of a segue into tacit knowledge, embodied capital, small networks and clusters and so forth. And that's around, a lot around knowledge management, um, which is a big field. So tacit knowledge being the knowledge you don't know you know, and it's really hard to pass on tacit knowledge. You can't just write it down. How do I teach riding a bike by riding it down? You need human interaction. Um, and I spoke about, you know, bringing people from one team and bringing them into another team. Well, when you do that, that team has, that person has a link back to his old team and they can bring to bear that network of people from that other team into this new team. So if there's a problem, he has this whole network of people that can solve that problem. And I, I spoke about the small world structure within organisations, you know, and that's where you're trying to reduce the silo effect in larger organisations in particular by having hubs and, and weak links between people. So as you move from one team to an old team, yes, that link back to the old team ages over time, becomes a bit weaker. It's still there, though. Mm. Um, so that was the conundrum I was trying to introduce. It's like, yes, it seems obvious that, um, hey, you don't want to pay the tax again for creating a new team. But there's some real benefits in shifting people on and breaking that team up and moving to different parts of the organisation because it reduces things like organisational learning, decreasing the, um, what I call the degrees of separation, going from six degrees to two degrees. Mm. Um, and there's vertical, there's mesh networks that happen across, uh, happen across your organisation um, and they, they're informal networks, but they're very powerful. Um, and they could quite often be the, the solution to your problems. That's yeah. where the innovative, novel ideas come from. There's those informal networks that can mm. solve those problems. It's not necessarily the, you know, the chief engineering officer or that will solve the problem. It's the people within the organisation forming groups to solve complex problems. Yeah, thank you. It was a great um, insight. Into, and you're right. I think ideas we, are popping up everywhere within organisations. And mm. I think the thing I took away from your session was there's a um, there's a compatibility between the you know the, the network, but also being heard as mm. well, and allowing the network to speak and, and to solve problems. So it was a it was a fantastic session. So as we um, as we sort of look uh, you know beyond sixty mark, yeah. have you got some advice for those professionals out there? A couple of things that take away that they they might want to hear from you, or just to help them on their marathon journey of their career. Look, well, this is one thing I say, to predict to the graduates is, you know, you've got plenty of time to move on to the next thing. So get good at what you do, do it well, um, because. As you shift on, it's harder to move back. Um, so it's it's good to get good at something and put that in your toolbox 
and move to the next thing. It's not necessarily as you move up the ladder, things get easier. They just get different. Um, and that was actually wise words from my chief engineer who, t- who told me that. Um, uh, and I, I, I believe in that too. I, that's, I think that's true. You know, it's, it gets a bit more complex in different ways from solving complex maths or science problems or computer programming problems to organisational problems. They're just different. Mm. That's great. Anything, yeah. um, any other final tip? It can be a footy tip. <laughs> oh, I hope the Crows win this year. <laughs> All right, we'll just call this to an end. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't know what's going to happen this year. I'm backing port as I do every year religiously. <laughs> All right, we'll do. Uh, th- what about we do three quick questions? All right, sure. a little bit about Jeff as we say goodbye. I'm going to throw a couple of questions at you. Sure. Favorite ice cream? Oh, I don't know. Vanilla. Vanilla, no, of course. Boring. It is an I don't know. <laughs> Horoscope. Uh, I'm Leo. Oh, of course you are. Up. Look at us, <laughs> scientists. Yeah. <laughs> of course you are. And um, favourite thing you're going to do this weekend? Uh, I'd like to say I'm going for a surf, but uh, so it's struggling with to find time is the, the issue, following kids around. But, uh, yeah, hopefully going for a surf would, just, would be it. <laughs> nice, nice. That sounds like a great weekend. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank, thank you for participating. Thanks not for just having in, me. Not just in 60 Mock. Um, our 124th session was a, an amazing thing for you to be a part of. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to put together the presentation. And thanks for being our first podcast interview. Is that right? Well, it's our very first it. one. And I got to practice my uh, my interview voice, which has only been 40 years. Thank you, thank Lee Sales. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, um, And I uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks.